Welcome to First Canada's FTC Sim Tutorials. This series is about how to use FTC Sim, a first tech challenge robot simulator created by First Canada. So welcome back and welcome if this is your first time. Uh, if you haven't already done so, you can go to ftcsim.org, as you can see it up here, slash FTC Sim, to create your own free account for FTC Sim. Um, when you do, you'll have access to these six options the one that we've been looking at recently is this ftc 2021 and that's what today's video is going to be about but uh if you're not at this point you're wondering you can click on the menu that's up to the top left and you can choose it'll say log in at this point because I'm, I'm already logged in and then you can go to ftc sim and it will take you to this landing page and when you get to this landing page uh, you can join us in ftc sim and use any one of these there's videos um, that have been created in, in youtube like this one for all sorts of things uh, if you have students or team members that you would like to get involved in doing something like this they can create their own free account or you can create a teacher account and then create logins and passwords for them and enroll them in these various uh, puzzles or challenges and there's a video in the youtube series on how to do that so take a look at that if you're interested Anyways, I'm going to go into this one and I'm going to choose uh, FTC field three. And I've already got some code in here because it's really long code. And the code we want to do today, uh, and this might be a long video, is going to be using, I'm going to try to zoom in a little bit. There's a camera right on here. It's a webcam. And one of the things that you can do in autonomous in this year's contest in Freight Frenzy 2021 for FTC is you can look at these and you can see that there's six of these uh, red dots they call them the barcode and there's going to be a little rubber duck on one of these three and if there's another robot in here on one of these three but this is more of a training learn how to code so you're not really competing against anybody you're competing against yourself by learning how to do this and this is the left one, the middle one, and the right one. So it's based on how the robot is looking at it, as we're going to see in just a second. So I'm going to run this so you can see what I'm talking about. So this square that's a rectangle that's appeared up here is the um, view that the robot has. And the robot has been trained using Vuforia and TensorFlow to determine whether or not it sees a duck. And it does see a duck. It's giving you a, a a percentage here on how accurate it thinks it is and based on that it's saying oh yeah this is a duck it's around 98 percent certain that this is a duck okay and when i reset this uh it might be in a different location so you can see it's on the far right uh, as a robot is looking at it so based on where the duck is the team during autonomous can put these blocks that you see here at this one with the x and there's other ones over here on this shipping hub and if it's at this one over here on the far right, it's supposed to put for more points, put those blocks on the top level. And if it's in the middle one, um, it would put it, oh, okay, it's chosen the first one. So it would, you would have to get more points by putting that on that first or lower level. So, so, so that's kind of how it works. So the robot uh, has been trained and it's given some samples and that's what we've put in here. So. You can see there's a whole big thing here just to give you some feedback on that uh, I didn't change any of the the basic ones that it came with but if you want to learn more about it and how to use it on your real robot uh, there is some information that's been provided by first tech challenge you can see here and it goes through how to do this and you can see when you choose to do this uh, on your real robot there is a sample that you can choose and it provides you with all the information and then it goes through what you would want to do and the big part that we don't really see when we do an FTC sim is that you want to initialize this first and that's where I've put it in in ours but essentially what it's saying is um, it's going to do this first before it starts to move and it goes through some of the things basically you're initializing it you're and then the initializing tensorflow and tensorflow is the part that recognizes and gives you the confidence level um, um, on if that thing that you spot is a duck in this case and then you activate it 
and it goes through more information about that and it's using some uh, stuff that it did last year for the previous game ultimate okay oh god i can't even remember what the whole game was called but there it is and here's the example it says oh i i think we see a duck and it's at a 90 percent cent level of certainty so i will put this link in the description of the video so you can see but essentially what i've done is i've gone to utilities I've gone to where it says TensorFlow Object Detection. This is the one I took. I've, I've dragged it in. And the only thing I changed, if you look at it, I'll just put them close to each other, is the camera's on the front of the robot. I have this, that's because it, it is. And the reason why that's there, and you can sort of see it, and it hasn't really been changed, I don't think, because it, it's changing a little bit, um, is the indication here is that there's a camera on the robot which is the way it used to be and the cameras uh, sorry a phone and those phones had cameras on the front and the back and so that's why it's saying are using the camera direction on the front or the back but uh, in this case I'm, I'm using it on the front because that's the only camera that I have on here it's not on a phone that's basically what, what it does so I've put that in and then I go here again to the same location and I grab this next one and uh, I didn't change it uh, I left it at whatever came in as 0.7, uh, 70%, 0.7 as a decimal, 70%. And then the last thing I did up here in initialize is I activated it. And then again, that's in the same location. There you can see called TensorFlow and activate it. Later on, I'm going to use uh, these things down here, which are going to give me some of those bounding information. So when I run it, just so you can see, it, it knows if I use it, the left side, the right side, the top, and the bottom, and it gives me a number on that. And it's telling me where it is in the screen. And in actual fact, what I'm doing is I've put that number up here. Uh, I've done a telemetry, I'll show you in a second, that says where that is. What is the left side of this bounding box? Because I, I, I'll take the left of each of them, and then I'll use that to make a decision on, on what I want to do. So. Um, I'll leave that for now. So now when it actually starts, it's going to start doing this loop because it's going to keep looking through there, um, through the camera and do a whole bunch of different things. And essentially what it's going to do is it's going to determine, and I created a, a variable for this, it's going to determine the length um, of the recognition. So the first thing it does is it sets the variable to get the recognitions, which is to recognize what it sees, if it sees anything at all. So if it doesn't see anything at all, it's the length of the recognitions. And length is a text thing. So if you haven't done a lot of coding, uh, typically what would happen is you would use that to determine, uh, if you're creating a program in Java to determine uh, if someone was entering a correct password, you would look at a bunch of things. And one of the things is you might say, well, it has to have eight characters. So someone would type in something, and if it had seven characters, uh, it would check the length. The length is the number of characters that's in it. So right now it's going to check to see if there's anything in it, um, and that's the length. So the recognition thing is a variable that stores what it sees. And if it has zero in it, then it doesn't see a duck. So <laughs> we're going to always assume uh, that it's putting a duck there, but we're, we've put it in because it works. Uh, so you don't, you'll never, you won't see this. The, the telemetry here where it says no items detected because no matter when you run this you will see that there's a duck in the picture so we're just going to assume that it is but we're going to put an else in and it says uh set the index uh the the number of things that it's finding to zero and then for each of the recognitions in the list so it's going to add to the index and and it's only going to see one duck so it's only ever going to get to one because every time it comes in here, it's going to reset to zero and then put down one. OK, but now here's the key uh, of what I'm doing here. So what I'm saying is I'm going to choose to display left. I only care about the left one. So the left edge of the bounding box, I only care about what number is produced here on the left. OK, and and basically I'm going to say this is going to be one level one, level two, and level three, and that is the levels that relate to these things here. So level one is the bottom, level two is the middle, and level three is the top. And I get more points if I put it on the correct level. 
that that block right there not the duck necessarily so i'm going to go in and i'm going to use the telemetry now if, if you don't know where to get the telemetry i've left it open here as you can see it basically it's there so it allows me to put telemetry in so there's my telemetry and i'm going to put in a keyword that goes with it and i'm putting in the left and you can see it's right up here because i've left this thing running and it's giving me the value of the left side of this bounding box the green bounding box <clears throat> and um it's finding the left side of that value the recognitions that we got way up here at the top okay and it, there's only going to be one thing that is recognized in there because it just may be in a different spot so what i want to do well the reason why that's up here is because i didn't know what the bounding boxes were until i did this so uh, i'm saying based on that that if it recognizes uh, a value that's greater than 900 because you can see that on the far right it's always going to be higher than 900 then set the level to three that's the level at the top or else if it's less if it's greater than 500 which would be the second one to trial and error it's 511 or 513 or something like that let's let's see if we can get that one there we go so you can see it's 513 this time through so if it's greater than 500 set the level to two and then since the duck's going to always appear if it's not this one and it's not this one then it's going to be the first one so i'm going to i don't even need to know the number but it would be about i don't know if it'll do it uh there we go it's about 92 sometimes it comes up as in the 80s uh, i'm going to set it to level one and those things are what i'm going to use later on when i'm driving that robot over here and deciding where to put it on there okay and so that's what it's doing so this one here is doing the telemetry so this telemetry is putting left up there and this telemetry is putting the value of one it's putting the left and the number of the left bounding area okay and then this one is putting the level so I know that level so I've created a variable for that because then later on I can use that to raise up and down the crane to get it at the right level so all of these things are in there hopefully I'm gonna what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna pause on them for a little bit so you can see because you'll be able to then go back to the video and pause it at that point to make sure you get them and again this first one this second one this third one they're all coming from tensorflow here under utilities then as i scroll down and leave it there for a bit so you can see it i'm using the loop that's provided when we do our framework and now i'm under the wait for start so now it's when i press the start button and i've created a variable so if you don't know how to do that go to variables and you create a variable and you can see i've created a variable called index variable called level and a variable called recognitions and here i'm seeing okay because it, it made me do that but um you can see where it's doing this thing here i'm using the recognitions here and here and then down here and a list is, a, is a, what's known as an array it's just seeing and again in, in this case it's pretty much going to be a list of one because there's only one duck that's in there but uh in the previous example where we had uh in this one uh where we had the rings you can see sometimes in this particular case if there was four rings if there was one ring if there was zero rings uh it would do something different last year um so that was how it was doing it so that, that was just give you an idea um and then i'll screw down a little further so you can see this and then the telemetry again i'm getting the telemetry from here and then again I, even though there's recognition left which is in the tel tensor flow you can see it scroll down right here there's a, a a left and a right a top and a bottom i only actually want the left because i just need to figure out if it's one two or three so that's what i'm doing and then i've used a couple of ifs now if you're not familiar with that the ifs come from the logic and i would drag in the if and then to do this part here where i have this greater than sign and the other one would have the greater than sign again i'm doing it in logic i'm dragging this one in and i'm choosing to go to the greater than sign and then i'm dropping in the recognition left from the tensorflow object the variable here uh, from my variables list and then i'm putting in the, the number 
from my math. So you can see it comes up at zero and you drag it in and you just change it. You put it in there and you say whatever the, the value is. Okay. So hopefully that's helped. Now you now it's up to you. Now that you've got this information, can you pick up this block and can you drop it on the correct level? So you would need to do something after this. You would need to get out of this loop. So if um, you might look up a previous video on loops on how to do that. But that's all the hints I'm giving, giving you. You will probably come up with a way to do this more efficiently than I have. If you do, I'd love to hear about it. And you can contact me at pkeenan at firstinspires.org. Hopefully you're enjoying the FTC SIM program, and hopefully you'll get back to us. And if this helps you with your season, I would love to hear that. So thanks very much, and we'll see you soon.